اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقران الحكيم انك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما انذر اباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على اكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مقمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأخشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون وسواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذر من اتبع الذكرى خشي الرحمن بالغيب وبشره بمغفرة وأجر كريم إنا نحن نحيي الموتى ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحصيناه في إمام مبين واضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب القرية إذ جاءها المرسلون إذ أرسلنا إليه مسنين فكذبوهما فأذتنا بالثالث فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء إن أنتم إلا تكذبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما علينا إلا البلاغ المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم ولا مسنكم منا عذاب أليم قالوا طائركم معكم أئن ذكرتم بل أنتم قوم مصرفون وجاء من أقصى المدينة رجل يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسألكم أجرا وهم مهتدون وما لي لا أعبد الذي فطرني وإليه ترجعون أتخذ من دونه آلهة إن يردني الرحمن بضر لا تغني عني شفعتهم شيئا ولا ينقضون إني إذا لفي ظلال المبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل ادخل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المكرمين وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جند من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون يا حسرة على العباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من القرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا محضرون وآية لهم الأرض الميتة أحييناها وأخرجنا منها حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وأعناب مفجرنا فيها من العيون يأكلوا من ثمره وما عملته أيديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسلخ منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عاد كالأرجون القديم للشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر على الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون وآية لهم أنا حملنا ذريتهم في الفلق المشهون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإن نشأ نغرقهم فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينقضون إلا رحمة منا ومتاعا إلى حين وإذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون وما تأتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا عنها مؤرضين وإذا قيل لهم أنفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أنطئم من لو يشاء الله أطعمه 
إن أنتم إلا في ضلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينظرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخصمون فلا يستطيعون توصية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفخ في الصور فإذا هم من الأجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بأثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصلق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا محضرون فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قولا من رب الرحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم ألا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وعني بدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أضل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تأقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم تعدون إصلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننقص في الخلق أفلا يأقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين ينذر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافي ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينصرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون فلا يحزنك قولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يؤلنون أولم يرى الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقا قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون وليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملقود كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد <تصفيق> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم إني أفتتح الثناء بحمدك 
وانت مسدد للصواب بمنك ويقنت انك ان ترحم الراحمين في موضع العفو والرحمن وشد المعاقبين في موضع النكال والنقمة وعدم المتجبرين في موضع الكبرياء والعدم اللهم أذنت لي في دعائك ومسألتك فاسمع يا سميع مدحتي وأجب يا رحيم دعوتي وقل يا غفور عثرتي فكم يا إلهي من كربة قد فرجتها وهموم قد كشفتها وعثرة قد أقنتها ورحمة قد نشرتها وحلقة بلاء قد فككتها الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذليه وكبره تكبيرا الله أكبر الحمد لله بجميع محامده كلها على جميع نعمه كلها الحمد لله الذي لا مضاد له في ملكه ولا منازع له في أمره الحمد لله الذي لا شريك له في خلقه ولا شبيه له في عظمته الحمد لله الفاشي في الخلق أمره وحمده الظاهر بالكرم مجده الباسط بالجود يده الذي لا تنقص خزائنه ولا تزيده كثرة العطاء إلا جودا وكرما إنه هو العزيز الوغاب اللهم إني أسألك قليلا من كثير مع حاجة بي إليه عظيمة وغناك عنه قديم وهو عندي كثير وهو عليك سهل يسير اللهم إنا عفوك عن ذنبي وتجاوزك عن خطيئتي وسفحك عن ظلمي واسترك على قبيح عملي وحل مكان كثير جرمي عندما كان من خطئي وعمدي أطمعني في أن أسألك ما لا استوجبه منك الذي رزقتني من رحمتك وريتني من قدرتك وعرفتني من نجابتك فصرت أدعوك آمنا وأسألك مستأنسا لا خائفا ولا وجلا مدلا عليك فيما قصدت فيه إليك فإن أبطى عني عتبت بجهلي عليك ولعل الذي أبطى عني هو خير لي لعلمك بعاقبة الأمور فلم أرى مولا كريما أصبر على عبد اللئيم منك علي يا ربي إنك تدعوني فأولي عنك وتتحبب إلي فتبغدوا إليك وتتودد إلي فلا أقبل منك كأن لي التطول عليك فلم يمنعك ذلك من الرحمة لي والإحسان إليك والتفضل علي بجودك وكرمك فرحم عبدك الجاهل وجد عليه بفضل إحسانك إنك جواد كريم الحمد لله مالك الملك مجري الفلك مسخر الرياح فالق الإصباح ديان الدين رب العالمين الحمد لله على حلمه بعد علمه والحمد لله على عفوه بعد قدرته 
والحمد لله على طول اناته في غضبه وهو قادر على ما يريد الحمد لله خالق الخلق باسط الرزق فالق الاسباح للجلال والاكرام والفضل والانعام الذي بعد فلا يرى وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى الحمد لله الذي ليس له منازع يعادل ولا شبيه يشاكل ولا ظهير يعادد قهر بعزته الأعزاء وتواضع لعدمته العظماء فبلغ بقدرته ما يشاء الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أنادي ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أعسي ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازي فكم من موهبة هنيئة قد أعطاني وعديمة مخوفة قد كفاني وبهجة مونقة قد راني فوثني عليه حامدا وذكره مسبحا الحمد لله الذي لا يهتك حجابه ولا يغلق بابه ولا يرد سائله ولا يخيب آمله الحمد لله الذي يؤمن الخائفين وينجي الصالحين ويرفع المستضعفين ويدع المستكبرين ويهلك ملوكا ويستخلف آخرين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين شريخ المستشرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين الحمد لله الذي من خشيته ترعد السماء وسكانها وترجف الأرض وعمارها وتموج البحار ومن يسبح في غمراتها الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي يخلق ولم يخلق ويرزق ولا يرزق ويتعم ولا يتعم ويميت الأحياء ويحيي الموتى وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وأمينك وصفيك وحبيبك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك أفضل وأحسن وأجمل وأكمل وزكا وأنما وتيب وأطهر وأسنق وأكثر ما صليت وباركت وترحمت وتحنت وسلمت على حد من عبادك وانبيائك ورسلك وصفوتك وأهل الكرامة عليك من خلقك اللهم وسل على علي أمير المؤمنين ووسي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وخي رسولك وحجتك على خلقك وآية تلك الكبرى والنبأ العظيم والسل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة سيدة النساء العالمين وسل على سبط رحمة وإمام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيداي شباب أهل الجنة وسل على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي حججك على عبادك وأمنائك في بلادك صلاة كثيرة دائما اللهم وسل على ولي أمرك القائم المؤمل والعدل المنتظر وحفه بملائكتك المقربين ويده بروح القدس يا رب العالمين 
اللهم اجعله الداعي إلى كتابك والقائم بدينك استخلفه في الأرض كما استخلفت الذين من قبله مكن له دينه الذي ارتضيته لا أبدله من بعد خوفه أمنا يعبدك لا يشرك بك شيئا اللهم أعزه وأعزز به وانصره وانتصر به وانصره نصرا عزيزا وافتح له فتحا يسيرا واجعل له من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا اللهم أظهر به دينك وسنة نبيك حتى لا يستخفي بشيء من الحق مخافة أحد من الخالق اللهم إنا نرغب إليك في دولة كريمة تعز بها الإسلام وأهلك وتذل بها النفاق وأهلا وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاة إلى طاعتك والقادة إلى سبيلك وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما عرفتنا من الحق فحملنا وما قصرنا عنه فبلغنا اللهم المن به شعثنا وشعاب به صدعنا وارتق به فتقنا وكثر به قلتنا وعزز به ذلتنا واغن به عائلنا واقض به عن مغرمنا واجبر به فقرنا وسد به خلتنا ويسر به عسرنا وبيذ به وجوهنا وفك به أسرنا وانجح به طلبتنا وانجز به مواعيدنا واستجب به دعوتنا واعطنا به سؤلنا وبلغنا به من الدنيا والآخرة آمالنا واعطنا به فوق رغبتنا يا خير المسؤولين وأوسع المعطين اشف به صدورنا وذهب به غيظ قلوبنا واهدنا به لما اختلف فيه من الحق بذك إنك تهدي من تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم وانصرنا به على عدوك وعدونا إله الحق آمين اللهم إنا نشكو إليك فقد نبينا صلواتك عليه وآله وغيبة ولينا وكثرة عدونا وقلة عددنا وشدة الفتن بنا وتظاهر الزمان علينا فصل على محمد وآله وإن على ذلك بفتح منك تعجله وبذر تكشفه ونسر تعزه وسلطان حق تظهره ورحمة منك تجللناها وعافية منك تلبسناها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد فاتح أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على 
الشيطان <تصفيق> We are discussing about the topic of plots and deceptions of shaitan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ayyuhal nas, O people, Whatever you find on earth, eat, but the criteria should be halal and tayyib, which means spark. And do not follow the steps of shaitan. Why? Indeed, he is your manifest enemy. So there is no doubt the shaitan is our enemy. And as I have uh, brought another verse of Quran, Allah says, <clears throat> when someone is your enemy, we have to consider him as enemy, not as our friend. Inna shaytana lakum adu, fattakhiduhu aduwa. Fattakhiduhu, akhdu means consider, consider shaytan as your enemy, not your friend. So Muminin, we learn in previous lectures that shaytan is from the tribe of jinnat. Kana min al jinni fafasakan amri rabbi. And Allah created Jinnat before the humanity. <coughs> and Allah, He created them with fire. And they have one plus point that they are capable to see us. And we are not capable to see them. So this is also mentioned according to the Quran. So <coughs> today I would like to focus first of all about the meaning of Shaitan. Shaitan means evil creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he became evil creation after the creation. Because Allah, whatever he create is Jamal and Jamil. Allah always, he does positive things. He says in Quran Majid, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَىٰ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We have not created a humans and jinnat except for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah created jinnat, among them was shaitan. So all of them, most of the most of them, they went against the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this guy, Iblis, he was worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah called him upon the heavens with Malaika. So he used to worship Allah within the Sufuf of Malaika. And more than 6,000 years he worshipped. And finally he became Iblis and he became Shaitan. So Mominin, we also learn that shaitan is just not from the tribe of jinnats. From among the humans, they are shayati. Shayatin al jinne wal ins. That's why I brought the words of Quran in which Allah says, We made for every prophet to be adu shayatin al jinne wal ins. Their adu enemies are whom? Shayatin from jinnat and insan. So insan, like jinnat, they were obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then afterwards, shaitan became shaitan. Likewise, those humans who are not in obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they misguide and mislead others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls them shayateen al-insa. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So what happens whenever there is a whisper of shaitan, what we do? We say, a'udhu billahi min shaitan al -radim. We seek refuge into Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever there is a whispering. But if a friend is coming to me and calling me, like for example, to go to, like for example, those places who are which are haram gathering, 
and I'm going with him. So at that point also, instead of uh, uh, accepting his proposal, I have to say, A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. This time the shaitan is in the form of a human. But we don't say. So that's why one day, uh, Rasul Akram Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, <coughs> he asked Abu Dharai Ghaffari, Abu Dharai Ghaffari is one of the great companions, uh, the, 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 the most scrutful companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So Rasulullah asked him, Did you secure yourself? Did you seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shayateen of insan and jinnat? So he was surprised. He asked Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, until now I knew that the shayateen are from the tribe of jinnat. I never asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I never seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From shayateen of ins, are they any shaitan within humanity? So Rasulullah, what he replied is, is very important. He said, Naam hum sharrum min shayateen al jinn. Sharr, which means uh, this is sirah mubalaga. Rasulullah, he says, humans are more shaitan than the shaitan among jinnats. So when a man is playing the role of shaitan, he is worse shaitan than shaitan himself. Please concentrate on this, this, this sentence of Rasulullah. Naam hum sharrum min shayateen al jinn. <coughs> Why, Mumineen? Humans could be more shaitan than jinnat themselves. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a lot of ability to humanity. Let me give you an example. When children, they grow up, they go to teacher, they gain knowledge, they are capable after gaining knowledge to teach that knowledge which they have learned. So they do expertise. So they become expert in subjects. So first of all, they are a student. When they are learned, then they become teacher. And sometimes when they become teacher, by teaching, they themselves become better than their own teachers. This is what happens. You know, in generations, we see how uh, education grows. You know, uh, up for first, for in first stage, the man is teacher himself. Then uh, a student himself. Then he, bec he be becomes teacher. And afterwards, he becomes uh, better than his own teacher. Like, for example, uh, within Fuqaha, you will see that Ayatollah Hui had lots of mujtahideen within his students. He admired them. You know, people they used to say that in the, you know, like 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 Bakr al-Sadr, he has in certain subjects he has more knowledge than like for example. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave capability to man to uh, be more knowledgeable than his own teacher. So now when it comes to shaitan, in first stage, humans they become student of shaitan. And then According to the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they themselves become shaitan, shayateen al-ins. And then afterwards, they uh, put shaitan himself behind. They become more experienced than shaitan. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Naam hum sharum bin shayateen al -jins. Humans who are shaitan, they are worse than the shaitan from jinnah. Sallallahu Muhammad wa Muhammad. <clears throat> Let me give an example to understand how humans could be more, more, more worse shaitan than shaitan from the tribe of Jinnah. Let me give an example. I will ask you a question. Does shaitan believe in the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes, he believes. He believes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. That's why he said, Kala so shaitan he believes in the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why he's made qasam of his mind. I do qasam of your izzat and might. That I will lead all of them together. Mislead all of humans. So shaitan believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his existence. But there are humans who atheists, for example, straight away, they decline the existence of God. So humans, 
in this category, they become worse than shaitan. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Quran Majid, Kamathali shaitan. There is a mythal of shaitan, example of shaitan. He asked insan, humans, to do kofra. So there are many people who are atheists who do not believe in the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Falamma kafar. When humans they accept the proposal of shaitan, Kala inni bari ummink. Secondly, he says straight away, I am bari, I have no association with you. Why? Inni akhafullah rabbul alamin. It is amazing. He says, I, indeed, I have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So kafir doesn't mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Neither he has fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But on the other hand, shaitan, Iblis himself, he knows the, about the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why he also has fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inni akhafullah rabbul alamin. Please say ala Muhammad wa alayhi. So in the front of deception of shaitan, what is our responsibility? I have said uh, we have to do muqatil. Waqatilu awliya ash-shaitan. And there is a narration from Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam. He says, safu shaitana bil mujahada. Make rows. Sufuf. Make sufuf to fight shaitan. Waghlibu ho bil mukhalafa. And if you want to have victory upon him, do mukhalifats. Resistance, not accepting the proposal of shaitan, straight away. So if we are successful, so of course, shaitan is going to be a loser, not us. But the problem is, you know, when he comes to us, he glamorizes things. He glamorizes things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ ارْتَدُّوا عَلَىٰ أَدْبَارِهِمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيِّنَا لَهُمْ الْهُدَى الشَّيْطَانُ وَالسَّوَّلَىٰ لَهُمْ Those who accepted Islam, but they became murtad. They went out from the religion of Islam. What happened to them? الشَّيْطَانُ وَالسَّوَّلَىٰ لَهُمْ Shaitan beautified their a'mal for them. So this is the reason why they went back from the religion of Islam. وَأَمْلَى لَهُمْ And shaitan gives false hopes. So these are the things because of which humans, they go away from Salat al-Mustaqeem. Let me give an example how he glamorized things. Of course, Salat al-Fajr is wajib. All of us, we know. Salat al-Dhuhr, Salat al maghrib is wajib. But shaitan at the time of down, he comes us, start whispering. Now this is, you know, winter. It's cold. Very difficult to wake up. We can do qada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rahman and Rahim. Uh, this is all the whisper. He does. So he glamorizes. He beautifies sleep in our eyes. But here we have to do mujahada. Mujahada, of course, it is mujahada. Mujahada means fighting against shaitan. This make efforts. You know, waking up in the morning, you know, those who have habit, alhamdulillah, you know, practice, that, that is not a matter for them. But for others, it is difficult. Like, for example, <coughs> lie in every nation, kidb, is haram. But what happens in our societies, I don't know about that. I think the first April, people, they want to lie. They want to make fun of each other. You know, they want to surprise. So, so they say lie. So, 1st April, Shaitan makes Kidb to be purified. Another example, you know, our youth especially, you know, I'm surprised, you know, Western culture now, uh, it's delivered to India and Pakistan as well. You know, having chats with na mahram is haram. Unless the lady is your mahram or in your nikah. Now, if you ask our youths within our societies, I'm speaking about Indian and Pakistan, you know, many of them, they have girlfriends and boyfriends. And even they do not know the evilness of this relationship. Because shaitan beautified this relationship. If someone like, for example, explain to them, this relation has no end, you know, there will be a lot of difficulties in your life. 
you know, in the reply, they smile, they make fun of the one who is doing nasiha. So this is how shaitan makes sins to be beautified and glamorized. So we have to understand how shaitan works. And Mominin shaitan works in three stages. You know, he's everywhere. For example, all of us, we have either haram or halal. So we have to choose halal. Either we have makruh or mustahab, so we have to choose mustahab. No mubah is mubah, of course. Other than these stages, there are three stages. Shaitan sits to whisper and misguide us. In the position of ta'abud, in relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to have ta'abud. What does that mean, ta'abud? If I have accepted Islam, and I believe in oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I have to have ta'abud in first stage. Whatever ahkam are written upon me, I have to accept them be, uh, without any questioning. Salat is wajib, so I cannot ask why salat is wajib. I have to accept because I have accepted Islam. If uh, Allah says, Kotiba alaykum as I have to have surrender. I have to accept there should be ta'abud, no why. So when we want to like, for example, have ta'abud at the position of ta'abud, shaitan comes. And there are many ahkam, you know, Muslimin they themselves criticize those ahkam. Why beard is wajib, for example? Where in Quran it is written that beard is wajib, for example? You know, they criticize why hijab is wajib. It is the freedom against the freedom of women. So these are the ahkam wajibat, you know, uh, 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 mentioned within quran -e majid But people, they want to argue. So in the position of submission, ta'abud, shaitan comes and asks women not to accept what else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for us. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. <laughs> In second stage, which is ta'aqul, pondering, we have to ponder whatever we, 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 we like, for example, about the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, usul uh, deen why Allah exists, why there is a need of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, why Allah should be adil, why there is a need of qiyamah, we have to ponder and do our research. So, so we are allowed to have thinking and proof. We have to have proof why we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in their existence. So in usul deen we have to make our own research why we believe in oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why he should be adil, why we should have Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his successors, imama, and likewise, why there should be a day of judgment. So we have to have our own proofs for them. But what happens, Mumineen, in ahkam, certain ahkam, when someone is criticizing hijab as being alimini or learn man, a mu'min is replying to them. So again, they do not accept. You know, I remember <coughs> I brought some verses of hijab to a mu'mina. She clearly says, you know, this is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. You know, this is, this, is, this is not mentioned in the Quran. So I said to them, everything is not mentioned within the Quran. Of course, it is mentioned. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Anbiya Tahirin, Aimma Tahirin alayhi wa salatu wa salam are the one who are going to explain us the verses. What is the meaning of verse? Allah says, Aqeemu salah, pray, establish prayers. And how we have to pray, we learn from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Reciting Hamd, Surah, Adhkar in Ruku, it is not mentioned within the Quran. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the one who teaches. So, in ta'akul, when I'm giving proof, shaitan comes when while man is pondering and try to block his ta'akul and capability of understanding things. So this is the second stage in which we have to be very much aware. And sometimes shaitan, when he is successful in the maqam of ta'abud and uh, ta'akul, he in third stage, shuhud is he mislead us in shuhud. Shuhud means you are watching truths, but you are not accepting. Like it happened in Karbala. You know, they saw this is grandson of Prophet Muhammad. All of them they knew. 
the sons of companions, whomsoever they came to Karbala. The enemies of Ahlul Bayt, they knew Imam, Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam, on plenty of occasions. He explained about his status. He said, I am son of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Khadijatul Kubra sallam alayhi Ali ibn Abi Talib is my father. Fatima to Zahra salam alayhi she is my mother. <coughs> You know, if on plenty of occasions, but shuhud, you know, shaitan, you know, made them blind. So what happened? Amr, uh, Umar Isad, Imam Hussain, he had a lot of uh, communications with him, meetings with him. So he said to Imam Hussain, I have offer of shahr Rai, governorship of shahr Rai. I'm going to be governor of shahr Rai if I kill you. So, Shaitan glamorized the kingdom of Ray for Umar Isad. So, he did not accept the message of Imam Hussain and he killed Aba Abdullah Hussain. So, we have to be very much aware of Shaitan in the position of Ta'abud, uh, Ta'akul, and Shuhud. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. <laughs> Now, I mean, the second thing is, if we try facing him, he runs away. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Quran Majid, Inna kaida shaitan kana da'ifa. Plot of shaitan is very da'if, weak. If we show little resistance, he runs away. If we say, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan, of course, if I am seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of shaitan, it is wadifa wajib upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect me. Because I am sincerely asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect me. So Allah says, show resistance. Inna kaida shaitani kana And of course, <coughs> one of his deception, shaitan deception is khawf movie. Lot of sins, people, they commit because of khawf. They have khawf. You know, uh, I ask people uh, sometime, uh, when I see Muslims, why you have uh, uh, you are selling, you have good shop, why you are selling alcohol? So they say, Maulana, you know, this is this is our problem. You call uh, specific, you give a specific name to certain shops. You say, you say license? Off license, yeah. You know, Muslims, they, they are owner within the month of Ramadan, of course. They say, Maulana, we have hope. We have, uh, you know, if, if we don't sell, we don't like this job, but if we don't sell, of course, our business is going to ruin and we will lose our business. So this is hope of shaitan. I'm giving you an example, existing example. Shaitan does that, makes you to have fear of losing wealth, having uh, losing money. <coughs> and Allah says, if you want to really fear, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In kuntum mu'minin, if you are believers, have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because shaitan is not your creator. Shaitan is not the one who gave you risk. So why you are having fear? I am the one who created you. I am the one who is going to provide your risk. I am the one who is going to give you deaths. And I am the one who is going to resurrect you on the day of judgment. And I am the one who is going to judge you, put you into hell or a heaven. So instead of shaitan who has no authority, you have to have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Now we mean having fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is not fearful. The that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not fearful. When we see, say fear of Allah, when we are, when we want to commit sin, that at that point we say have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, there is no uh, need of uh, being scared of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to have love with Allah. Awliya Allah, those who are waliyullah, they are in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But those who get influenced with the whisper of shaitan, so they have to have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam Ali alayhi salatu wa salam, he says, in one of his narrations, that إِذَا خِفْتَ الْخَالِقْ فَرَرْتَ إِلَيْهِ When you have fear of anything, for example, in your life, this is very beautiful hadith. When I am afraid of snake, 
what happens? I run away. I run away. If I'm scared of lion or anything which is going to kill me, I run away. But fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't make us to run away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It makes us to be closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the fear of parents, for example. Sometimes parents, they want a children to have fear and to listen to them. So that fear of parents is beauty. It is good for children and his, their future. So likewise, Mu'mineen, always Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admired those who have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they approach to a sin. And he said to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to deliver <coughs> this message. قُلْ إِنِّي أَخَافُ إِنْ عَصَيْتُ رَبِّي عَذَابَ يَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ Please concentrate. قُلْ Say, O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rasulullah is saying about himself. إِنِّي أَخَافُ Rasulullah is saying, indeed, I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in asaytu if I go against his commandments. So Rasulullah has fear while going against the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have fear of what? Adaba yomin adim. The adab of the great day, which is the day of judgment. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why, I mean, those who are knowledgeable, between ulama and I'm at Tahirin alayhi salatu wasalam, knowledgeable people, are they, they have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Innama yakshallah min ibadihi al-ulama. Who are fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Innama yakshallah min ibadihi. From the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who have knowledge al-ulama, they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while they face any kind of sins. And according to the narration, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, he says, Ra'asul hikmati, the greatest wisdom is makhafatullah, having fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Muhammad Waqir alayhi salatu wa he says, <coughs> you have to have an element of hope and fear both together. You know, within our societies, I have as I have explained before, you know, people, they do not pray, they do not, do not want to fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rahul Rahim. So this kind of a hope is false hope. Amla lahum. As, as shaitan, he glam, glamorized. But having hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is good. While we are performing all our wajibat, uh, we are refraining from all of the sins. If there is a, any li little mistakes, of course, we have to have hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. So Imam Bakr alayhi salatu wasalam, he, he says, uh, how much fear and hope you have from Allah? He says 50-50%. If you put on two sides of scale, 50% should be fear and 50% should be hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, Janab al Luqman, he said to his son, he said, khifillah khifatan. Please concentrate on this hadith of Janab al Luqman alayhi salatu wasalam, nasiha to his son. He says, Have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if you have thakalain, if you have done a lot of good deeds, like the deeds of all human beings and angels, for example, bibirrath thakalain. So have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That on the day of judgment, maybe he could punish you, although you have a lot of good deeds in your accounts. So sometimes, you know, people, when they have good deeds, a lot of good deeds, they are worshipping Allah, doing namaz, Jummah, salatul layl, shaitan comes to them and make them <coughs> to be arrogant. So Hazrat Luqman, alayhi salatu wasalam, he says, although you have 100%, you have given your 100%, you know, out of 100 you are a hundred. You are your basis in Jannah. Still, you have to have fear of Allah. And Warajullah Rajan, Please concentrate. But if you have wrongdoing in your accounts, equivalent to the wrongdoings of humans and Jinnats, Malaika, you know, everything zero in account. So, if the situation is like this, at this situation also, we have to have a raja 
hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who forgives if we do tawbah with sincerity. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And Allah praised those who have khawf, his khawf. He says, وَأَمَّا مَنَ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَنْ نَفْسَ عَنِ الْحَوَىٰ And those who have khawf from maqam rabb. وَنَهَنْ نَفْسَ عَنِ الْحَوَىٰ And they uh, decline the wasps of shaitan. فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَعْوَىٰ So their end is jannah. And Allah says, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَان And those who have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them into the jannah, jannatan, two jannah, not single jannah. So I mean, our responsibility for today, let me do the conclusion, we have to have fight. And we have to be successful in this fight with shaitan. Otherwise, the man is going to be very much loser. Because Allah, if we have defeat in some cases, there is a way of Tawbah. And especially, we cannot have defeat from Shaitan while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us Thawab by multiplication. He says, uh, there is a narration uh, from our Imam Imam Sajjad alayhi salatu wasalam. <coughs> Wailun, go to those people. Leman galabat ahadu ashara. Those whose sins overcome to their ashar. Ashar means what? When I commit, uh, perform a single good deed, okay? Manja abil hasanate falahu ashro amthaleha. So when I am performing one single deed, that is multiplied by 10 thawab, okay? So if I did like, for example, five good deeds, I have performed 50 good deeds, for example. Okay. Likewise, 10 multiply by 10. So if I am committing many sins, 50 sins, okay, in a day, and not capable to perform good deed, only five good deed multiply by 10, 50. So this man is loser according to the narration of Muhammad Sajjad So, we have to have, uh, see our accounts and we have to do muhasaba, which is very important. Hisab on daily basis. If we want to have success within this world and here after, especially in the relation to our spirituality, so in that, at that point, we have to do our hisab. Like we maintain our balance sheet. Like those uh, youths who go, like for example, to gym, they know their progress what they have gained and what they have to gain, okay? So we have to see the balance sheet of our thawab and our sins on daily basis. And until the time we don't do this, there will be no, no progress spiritually. And according to this narration of Muhammad Sajjad alayhi salatu wasalam, what we learned tonight, our good deeds should be more than our bad deeds on daily basis. So inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect us on the day of judgment with those who are faizun. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Now, uh, I would like to uh, reply to the questions uh, which we uh, received yesterday. Please, Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Salli ala Muhammad there is a question about uh, its general custom among many Shia in uh, Islam that they say, Salaamu Alaikum Ya Ali Madad. Is it appropriate to make Ya Ali Madad as part of Salaam? Moving in this question, Salaamu Alaikum, first of all, of course, there is no uh, a replacement of Salaam. Salam is one of the Mustahab act, and according to the narrations, the one who says Salam alaikum, there are sabab 70 hasanats. You know, when we say Salam alaikum, alaikum salam, there are 70 hasanats. So the one who says Salam alaikum, he gets 69 hasanats. And the one who replies, he gets only one hasan. So that's why it is encouraged and highly, highly recommended 
to start uh, you know to, to be first in saying salam salam alaikum so salam it has own space but mu'minin there are a group of mu'minin and shia especially in our societies in india and pakistan in iran as well after salam alaikum they say ya ali madad if they are replacing salam alaikum with ya ali madad that is not appropriate they have to say salam alaikum i can see there are some people who just say ya ali madad they do not say salam alaikum that and you know there are they, 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 are, they are they are somehow in denial of salam alaikum so that is not appropriate so they have to say salam alaikum because that is the greeting of islam way of greeting and that's why when we go to ziyara of ahle bayt alaihi salatu wasalam what we do assalamu alayka ya abu abdullah we say salam to aimma tahrin alaihi salatu wasalam now in regards to ya ali madad so there are people who say salam alaykum and ya ali madad as well so if you know within iranians uh, we see when they uh, when they meet each other they say ali yarat you know this is not just within our society also in iran ali yarat means may ali ibn abi talib be a helper of you so <coughs> because we say ya ali madad we seek help from ali ibn abi talib alayhi salatu wasalam and indeed i we believe firmly that i am tahirin alayhi salatu wasalam and ali ibn abi talib alayhi salatu wasalam although they are not in front of us bal ahyaun inda rabbihim they listen to us wa qul a'malu fa sayara allah amalakum wa rasuluhu wal mu'minun this is the verse of quran do good amal because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who see your amal wa qul a'malu wa sayara allah ru'yat our amal is being seen by allah wa rasuluhu and the rasul and mu'minin so if someone saying salam alaykum ya ali madad o ali ibn abi talib be helper of you so this is dua ya jumla so there is no harm in that there is no harm in because when we say salam alaykum ya ali madad or instead of anything we ask how are you whatever the communication is the communication so this salam alaykum is uh, etiquettes of islam and ya ali madad is the sentence of dua okay sentence of uh, asking help from ali ibn abi talib like we say ya wajihan indallah ishfa lana indallah in 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 uh, the dua tawassul we could say ya ali ishfa lana indallah okay so there is no harm there is no contradiction but the problem is you know people they want to make these two things to be to look like they are in contradictions of each and another like this also happens you know azadari is afzal or namaz is afzal so this comparison is wrong those who are doing these comparisons they are not right people of course namaz at the time of namaz there is nothing better than namaz and that's why imam husain alayhi salatu wasalam on the day of ashura he stop another wajib which is jihad for the sake of salat so uh, we try to ease the contradiction within our societies by teaching and giving knowledge to mu'minin sallallahu alaihi wasallam muhammad wa ali muhammad i have another question if we travel in ramadan after zuhur and return can continue fasting the second day but do we have to make our prayers full as well okay so if i travel after zuhur in month of ramadan from london which is my hometown and i come before maghrib so of course i am going to continue my fast even if i don't come before maghrib again i have to complete my fast and for next day of course when i am back to my hometown i have to fast and i have to pray four rakat namaz in zohar asr and isha likewise and there is uh, you know uh, usul whenever your namaz is kamil your fast is wajib whenever your fast is wajib your salat is also kamil with some exceptional salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad <laughs> we just had two questions so
you have to pray on in your journey yes Roger, yes so if i am traveling uh, i am in travel uh, after 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 salat al-dhuhr so maghriban if if i i have uh, uh, complete the distance of uh, farsakh the, the the criteria so of course my salat is going to be qasr when i am in safar so if i come back before uh, dawn of next day so of course i fast when i am back i will recite full namaz in my words Yes, 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 yes. After the Lord. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. No problem. That's fine. Because you, you were in travel out of London, for example, 44 km, kilometers return journey. So <clears throat> in that case, Maghrib and Isha, basically. Maghrib is three rakat. You have to recite three rakat. Isha will be a qasr. And next day when you are back, so you will decide from the last No, 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 no. If if you come back to your home before Dhuhr, you have to fast. If you next day, next day before Dhuhr, you have to fast. Wa akhiru da'amana ni alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We encourage mu'mineen. to write questions and send to me uh, or send to brother abdul samad or management uh, abu sharif brother abu shay sharif is here so they will send your questions to me and inshallah i will reply to those questions tomorrow and the reason of replying to questions tomorrow of course if i have course questions ahead so i can give and explain you further more in depth for example uh, like uh, you raised the question some the, some other questions which should be you know we should uh, be given more clarification for example so for that reasons i want you to uh, send your question like for example today whatever questions you have you just do text messages and inshallah uh, we will reply next day and this asking questions it is very important allah says fas alu ask questions and of course <coughs> when you ask questions we also get thawab of replying to it wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our amal in month of Ramadan and please decide five times Amma Yujib altogether for those mu'mineen who are around, uh, ill around the world, especially uh, the mother of Brother Tabreed and also my uncle Mirza Riyaz Ahmed who is critically ill in India, Hyderabad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recover all mu'mineen and mu'minat with the barakah of Ramadan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. اما يجيب المضطر اذا دعاه ويكشف السوء 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 ليس في سوره المباركه الفاتحه قال اول مرحومين سبيشلي اور مرحومين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله احد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد بسم الله الرحمن قل هو الله احد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد ربنا تقبل منا هذه التلاوه وبعث ثوابها الى ائمه المعصومين ثم الى ارواح جميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين